Boker Tov, covering the I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Vladimir Putin has won the presidential election for another six years. Uh, he was asked by reporters as soon as he, uh, he gave his acceptance, acceptance speech late last night whether or not he would actually run until 2030. President Putin said uh, he's not going to make any constitutional changes that would allow him for a fifth term. And he said also he didn't want to run for president being 100 years of age. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, he was asked about the Skripal case. And that, in fact, was the very first thing that reporters were asking him what his opinion was about the Skripal case. Uh, the double agent in Britain that was poisoned using the Novichok nerve agent gas there. And Putin answered and responded that the Russians had actually, under, under uh, the watchful eye, uh, of the, the organizations that were overseeing the destruction of chemical weapons destroyed their chemical weapons stockpile. He did note that, however, Western partners did not do the same. They continue to use uh, or develop chemical weapons, and he said Russia no longer has the chemical weapons. Of course, that's President Putin and what he says there. We don't know this for sure, and as I've always said, you know, there is a possibility that Russia could have done this themselves. Uh, but the likelihood is very low, given the fact that we know already the sarin gas attacks that have happened both in 2013 as well as 2017 were clearly the evidence showed that there were uh, CIA and Turkish involvement along with ISIS that was doing these. And it gives more probability that there is a very sinister agenda to try to justify a war against Russia. Uh, that being said, we also know that the United States, the CIA, had control over the, uh, the chemical weapons that was being used from Uzbekistan after the collapse of the Soviet Union, and the U.S. had the control of this since 1999 under the, uh, under the control of the CIA. Uh, going into other news as well, and we're just kind of doing a kind of an overview right now, friends, uh, Russian General Staff's main operations department, Colonel General uh, Rutsky, Rutskoy, uh, says the U.S. is preparing to strike Syria. We see signs that the U.S. is readying strikes on Syrian government forces as carrier strike groups have been deployed in the Mediterranean. And we mentioned this the other day already, and we are watching to see how this is going to develop. There are more and more gas attacks happening in East Ghouta, and every time we see this happen, it is just so obvious that... Uh, you know, it's definitely not the Syrian government because the Syrian government is making headway on driving out all of the jihadists that are in that area. They've been also getting out the civilians and, uh, you know, just there is no reason why the Syrian government would need to resort to a chemical weapons attack to begin with. Uh, moving on over to Israel, very troubling article here that came out on Arut Shiva today. Uh, this course will be March 19th, 2018. It says French consulate officials smuggled weapons to Judea and Samaria using an actual uh, French vehicle there to get those in there. Uh, said Israeli authorities say two employees of the French consulate in Jerusalem worked with an armed smuggling ring in Judea and Samaria in Jerusalem to sneak weapons out of Hamas ruled Gaza Strip. It was re revealed that a French National, this was on Sunday, employed by a consulate and been arrested several weeks ago for serious security issues, sources close to the case said. The French national, a man in his 20s, is due to appear before the court in southern Israel on Monday, they said, ahead of the man's court appearance. Uh, officials from Israel's Shin, Bet, uh, Shin Ben uh, Inter Internal Security Agency revealed that the suspect, Romain Fran uh, Franck, had been involved with a smuggling ring which included Arab residents of Judea and Samaria and Jerusalem. Very troubling information. Also, the uh, we already know about the attacks there, the stabbing that took place uh, uh, just the other day of a security official there in uh, the old city of Jerusalem there is in critical condition, and I thought I might be able to see that article up here somewhere. Don't see it right offhand, but... There was uh, a security man that was uh, stabbed in a terrorist attack inside the old city, though, there, that is, is in very critical condition there, a uh, very serious situation inside of Israel. It, it seems that the Intifada is once again uh, raging in the country uh, with all of the talk of moving the embassy, uh, the U.S. Embassy there to uh, Jerusalem, which we believe is a New World Order move. Uh, so the Palestinians that are all upset and up on arms about this, I think you're missing a bigger picture. This is a new world order move. They are going to put the old city under a United Nations control, and the Vatican will get hegemony over that old city. 
Uh, also, we have a uh, word coming out, India threats to invade Pakistan and a shock warning as World War III fears escalate. Thank Dr. Rosa for sharing this with us. India has threatened to invade Pakistan in a dramatic rise in rhetoric. Uh, the two countries continue in a vicious border dispute. You know, both these countries are nuclear armed as well, which makes it even more of a serious situation there in the region. And as you can see here on your map, we have Pakistan right there. Kashmir is always the the big contended area there uh, where the uh, India and the, the Pakistanis are always fighting over that portion of the border. Uh, but anyway, pray for the peace uh, for these people that are living in these areas here. But India, Pakistan, it is not going to go good if fighting breaks out there. And I wouldn't doubt that it, bre it breaks out there if we end up with a major war in Syria, especially if Russia and the United States go at it head to head. It will definitely cause a ripple effect all across the globe. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.